To our final episode, the nightcap for Dan and Josh. I'm excited to have my, my friend back with me, Coach Kaylee. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to have you. It's been a while. You've been out there doing all kinds of things, huh? Where you been? I've been booming. We got softball. We got tryouts. Everything's coming down with fall season, so I'm ready, but I'm busy. <laughs> Busy, busy, just uh, life of a coach, never a day off, right? I get it. So, Coach, before I get into episode tonight with you and me, I've got some triv- uh, some facts. I've been taking a little bit of more time of researching, trying to sound more you know, professional, like I know what I'm talking about. So there's a few things with it being basketball night that maybe people don't know about. Uh, so if, a couple of basketball facts. Naismith, you know, inventor of basketball, James Naismith. If y'all didn't know this, James Naismith, Naismith actually started – back in the day, training people at the YMCA. Did you know that? Kind of no. crazy. Cool. I didn't know that either. I looked it up. You know, and everything's true on the internet. So look it up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, on Naismith started with the YMCA. I also found out when basketball players started, back when they first started training and learning how to, you know, work and handwork and all that, they actually started using soccer balls. Did you know that? No, that's pretty crazy. interesting. Crazy. Um, the slam dunk contest was actually made, uh, the, the term slam dunk was invented in the 40s. So before that, there was no such thing as a slam dunk. So it's been around for about 80 wow. something years. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah. And my, my last uh, interesting fact, when basketball was first incorporated, people used to play in a cage. It was almost like, almost like a wrestling thing. So it was a cage oh. when they first started playing basketball. So crazy facts, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. I didn't know any of that. So, but no, it's, uh, you know, Tonight is a great night. It's basketball night, and we've been blessed to get to track down uh, one of the coaches that we've been inspired by for a long time. Actually, was an OSU alum. Shout out to all of our our, our people from Oklahoma State. Um, but this this gentleman is doing great things, working with the Cavaliers now. Assistant coach over there. Um, just just can't say anything but positive about this man, uh, from his work ethic to his outlook on the sport to his philosophy, and just that positive vibe you get being around him. It makes you want to be a better person on and off the court. So no wonder everyone that talks about him loves him so i don't want to waste any more time kaylee i want to get right on to it and bring on coach antoine broxy coach how you doing man hey good evening to you i'm doing fine and you guys amazing doing great so coach we, we've got a few questions uh, over the years that have, have stood out to us to ask you so i'll take the first one then kaylee will go so obviously you know being a, a elite coach top of top of your craft i work in amazing watching what you do i see a lot of what you post and just the internet's great you see lots of footage but take me back man when you first started playing back in the day even before coaching and even before your playing days when did you first pick up a ball when did you first get the itch to start playing in your life you know so here's here's the crazy thing basketball was not my first sport baseball was i was a baseball group um football was my second sport and then basketball came last i um I played baseball. I, you know, I I grew up watching baseball tonight, watching like Detroit Tigers, one of my favorite, favorite teams. Just watch Lou Whitaker and Alex Bramall and, you know, Cecil Fielding hitting home runs. And I always thought that I was going to be a baseball player because, you know, I I had a great stretch from, from the first base, from on first base. And also I was a good right fielder. Um, Then, you know, being from Florida, football is always like the the staple. Like you have to play some kind of football. So I picked up a football and I actually pretty I excelled at it. Like at ninth grade, I was varsity already. So um I did that. And then next thing you know, they were like, hey, let's try this basketball thing. So I went out there and I started just like I blocked the shot and then <laughs> <laughs> and I can do that. They were like, yeah, you can do that. I, I blocked the shot by accident because dude shot and I put my hand up and I just just knocked it down. And they were like, dang. So yeah, that game and it was like eighth grade. I, I had no idea what I was doing. I had like 10 points, 10 rebounds and 10 blocks. And it was and I just triple double <laughs> yeah, falling in love with it after that. I just just started taking it more and more seriously. So, oh, and that was all they wrote, huh? From that, that moment yeah. forward, huh? Yeah, that was all they wrote after that. I was just, just still locked, still, I, I still played baseball. Um, I still wanted to play baseball and I, I quit um, 
during that. I mean, I quit my ninth grade year because everybody was picking on me and stuff like that. And like I was, I, I let the peer pressure get into me and I quit. And the coach never, never looked at me the same after that. And I, and I like, that's the first and only time I've ever quit something. Okay. My dad, okay. My dad like went into me and told me if I ever quit again, he's going to. I got you. Yeah. This, this point, I got you, man. Just to coach two sports at the same time. Off season. Let's go and do it, man. You know? <laughs> I, I haven't been in a batting cage so long. And and again, like, I actually, believe it or not, I went to my first baseball game. Because, um, you know, like, with me playing ball, like, we kind of coincide with baseball. But, like, there's no baseball team in Tampa, Florida. Like, we have spring training for the Yankees, which the Yankees are one of my favorite teams. So I never got a chance to go to any of the games and every time like for example when we play New York you know Donovan Mitchell dad is like with the with the uh, Mets so yeah. he's all inviting me to the game and then inviting us to the game but we never get a chance to go because they're never in town but I finally went to a Blue Jay game up in Toronto they were playing uh who, did, who were they playing they were playing somebody well anyway Craig BGO's son hit, hit a home run in the eighth bottom of the eighth inning and it was like it's like dang this is i have never been to a game ever in my life and it was an amazing game it's addicting but man the orioles, played the orioles. The orioles that day the orioles that's who they played the orioles i love so, it i love it man some front toss let me toss you some balls oh. I'm, and, and i'm a switch hitter too i'm a switch hitter. Okay. i love i can hit left and right oh yeah okay so i was just gonna say why basketball like i know you're just talking about like you had two different sports to pick you had to choose between, you know, baseball or basketball, but what really drew you towards basketball and like what drives you to always pick every day? I mean, what what drove drove you to basketball? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six eleven. That's what that's what, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think it drove me. I think they just said, Hey, you're six eleven. You need to go try this out for a second. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, that's you to be honest with you. I was always tall. And like in the eighth grade, I was like six, seven. And I just towered over everybody. And like we went out there and then next thing you know, like it became second nature. So mm. and I started understanding it and started watching it even more at that time. I mean, um, you know, at that point we didn't have YouTube. So we had to watch full games and and I started to fall in love with it more and more and more. I watched like Seattle Supersonics, one of one of my favorite players is Sean Kemp, you know, the Rain Man. And I used to just watch him. And me and my brother used to always like reenact like dunks and stuff like that when he used to throw mm-hmm. his hands up when Gary Payton throws the alley oop and he dunks on people. <laughs> and stuff like that. So that's what I used to actually do. Like me and him would do. So that's how I fell in love with it. Again, like watching my Ahmad Rashad on, on Saturday mornings and watching, Man. you know, yeah. you know don't have those day those things anymore so nostalgia nostalgia man Kaylee I think you, you talked about this Kaylee how the way that it just it's naturally easy for you coach which is awesome you know it's, it's crazy so um I think it's neat um kind of kind of clarify Kaylee looking at what you've done Kaylee you softball came easy to you so I totally get that I think it's neat the uh the way that softball came easy to you. I see it's just natural. Like athletes have certain things that gravitate towards. And I'm so glad it was easy for you, man. Cause I, I, I love watching it. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad it naturally became part of something that you do influences and all that. When you think about that too, obviously now that you're influencing athletes, you're influencing people at the highest level, you have to know the game and be at the highest level to be able to teach others. You know, when I look at giving Kaylee, for example, you got to be the best to teach, right? So you, now that you're influencing others, Who's been that biggest, if there's maybe one or two influences on you as a coach, as a mentor, who, who do you look to for guidance now that you're molding others, you know? I mean, of course, I mean, my college coaches, I, I, I take a lot of them. I, all the coaches, honestly, that I've that I played for, because I played for quite a bit. Um, Clem Haskins was one of them. And even now to this day, like, I still talk with him, but and with J.B. Bickerstaff for the longest, and I've been learning under him for a while, him and Greg Buckner and you know, JJ Outlaw, all of these guys have been in the NBA 10, 10 years. So uh, who who else? And uh, Dan Jero and with Cleveland, like all of these guys have been in the NBA. And I just shut up and listen the whole whole time. And hmm. that's what I do. I shut up and listen and, and try to try to retain the stuff that that they teach me. But also too, like 
I, I try to have a sense of um how you say personal personal stuff with it like you know making sure I I know how I want to treat a player as opposed to you know like how I would want to be treated so I treat them the same way in terms of when I was a player you know like mm. like how I took the 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 things that I didn't like and I changed them and tried to make to the things that I did like because again I'm, I'm I'm a very personable guy and I think like the climate is changing nowadays in, in, in sports where you can't just how you say just talk to players any kind of way now you have to actually talk to them and actually like get to know them know their mm-hmm. know know that they're different in in all ways and have to be able to touch them in so many ways yeah, and that's Kaylee. That's actually something that leads into your part too, Kaylee. Kaylee does a little segment for us where it's uh, kind of mental performance and just the game is so much more than just the athlete, right? So that it's it's neat that you say that, Coach. That it's so much more than just being a player. It's a person. They have feelings. They've got emotions. They they are somebody off the court too. So that's man. I took it out of my mouth, Kaylee. But that that's kind of your your specialty, right, Kaylee? Would you say? Yeah, I was. It was hitting hard right there because you know I played Division One. And I coach now. So being on both sides is definitely an advantage, I would say. But it's also nice because it's we're focusing more on the mental side and opposed right. to the, the game's going to constantly change, things like that. But people change, too. And they're always going through something on the inside. And it's always going to affect how they perform. So I think that's awesome that you focus on that. And I think it's great that you're also teaching yourself and still trying to learn and like that's my biggest thing too as a coach like I want to constantly learn I want to constantly you know get as much information as I can because the more that I learn the more that I can you know output I think that's great that you focus on that too love it like you have to you have to take that into consideration because you know those days of just talking to players to try to motivate them are dead and gone like you have to get to know them you have to know you know their history uh, i mean because a lot of people have been through a lot of things and especially basketball players i mean not basketball but sports sports figures and my thing is like I have to make sure that you have some kind of personal personable um relationship with them and i take that to heart like you cannot not have not have that and mm. you're not going to do it you, this, this is probably not the 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 profession for you yeah because you're constantly I think it's neat too. And I, I know Kaylee, you kind of, that is great the way you morphed that question. Coach, it's just, I could go on for days about, it's so much more important um, what we do off the field. It's great. or off, off the court, right? There's, it's just such a limited thing that we do. So much more of our lives are spent off the court, off the field, even with the kids we teach, we go from like 12 to 16 you, and the message stays the same when you're at the highest level of, you know, professional sports, right? Like we're with a lot of professional softballers, basketballers, footballers, and the message is the same. You have to be able to help them get through off the field stuff, off the court stuff, almost it sounds like just as much as on the court. Is that what you're saying, coach? Right. I mean, you have to, I mean, that's the only way you're going to get them to succeed because they have to, they have to be able to solve those problems off the, off the, off the field, off the court off the off the you know baseball diamond or softball diamond they have to be able to solve those problems and they come into you because they you, you think about it, they spend a lot of time with you and they're hearing you all the time like they're hearing you telling them how to be and how to like how to play and all that stuff but at the same time when they leave the leave the field or the court they have to know like you have to know that they're going through things or they may not be going through saying something but at the same time like they have to know that you care also with what you, with what you're teaching and care about their future like that's mm-hmm. that main thing like you have to you have to be able to step outside of yourself because again like it's not about you anymore it's about them you have Man. to sit out, you have to you have to give them you know what they need to succeed and you're not gonna you're not gonna pass every time but at the same time you're gonna you're gonna fight for it and i like i always I always tell my players i'm not gonna allow you to fail no matter what like it may not happen next year. It may not happen two years from now. It may happen 10 years from now. But at the same time, I'm going to be in your life regardless. Because mm, that's what that's good. Like, once you leave me, it, 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 this is a lifelong contract. I love it. Kaylee, you have anything to add to that before I transition? That's powerful, man. Yeah, just he's saying all the best things because that's typically what I touch on all the time. And I just think it just comes down to building trust. End of the day, like you said, we spend a lot of time together. And if they can't trust you, you know, 
just in general, like as a person, then how are they going to trust anything to say and how are you going to get anywhere? So awesome. That's powerful, yeah. man. So coach, there, there's this, I'm sitting here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm on my feels right now. I'm feeling things, right? So I got to take a minute because I'm feeling it. So I'm going to transition. I got, I need to laugh for a minute because I'm feeling inspired, but I'm going to transition to you, coach, to a little segment. Kaylee and I love this. We bet on this every time. So coach, you're going to get a kick out of this, but it's the only part I don't prep you for. Now this will be on DraftKings. I'm going to let you know. I'm just kidding. Okay. But we do, what we do, <laughs> we, there's five questions that hopefully in interviews you've done something a little different. This isn't even really, really based around sports per se, but it'll crack you up. Imagine that time doesn't exist. It can be, you can be in a cartoon. It can be multi, multi universe. It can be past or present. These are some things you got to respond to these questions. You got to pick one. Okay. So Kaylee, you ready? You got your picks. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So first question, coach, um, there's a lot of times celebrities, athletes, coaches get to be a part of, you know, TV shows, movies, different, different pop culture things. So you're Mm -hmm. asked coach Roxy, uh, no, you won't be called this, but you're asked to be a part of these two iconic franchises. You get to pick which one. You can be a part of the next coming season of The Witcher. It's a great okay. show on Netflix. You can be yourself. So you can be like a, a main character, right, in The Witcher, or you can be yourself in an upcoming uh, episode of The Simpsons. Witcher or Simpsons, which one do you want to be a part of? I want The Witcher. I knew Simpsons. it. I got Simpsons, they're going to pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Haley, did you have that one? Did you have Witcher? No, I got it wrong. I thought he would be the Simpsons. That would be a cool 611 Simpson, but I mean, I get Let's it. Let's go. <laughs> 611 person holding that sword. Let's go. Let's go. Kind of like a, kind of like a, uh, another character that's kind of like the mountain. Big, awesome physique, tall, powerful. Let's go. Right. I, I got you. Next one, man. So you have to coach. Um, we're going to go and call it. You guys are going to be in the finals. We're going to go and say it now. I'm prophesying it. I'm going to put a stamp on it. So during the finals next year, you have okay. to coach. You have to coach game one, not in a suit that you typically do or nice nice stuff. You have to wear either A, a Brahma Bull mascot, just random Brahma Bull costume like you'd see at Spirit Halloween, or B, one of those sumo suits that people walk around in. The entire game for world, for uh, for finals, Brahma Bull suit or sumo suit, which one are you wearing? Taking Brahma Bull. Let's I go. Like the- <laughs> Everybody knows I like the rock. Let's go. Kaylee, did you have that one? I got that one, yeah. One for one. I got you. So, next question. You get two. This is a coaching question. You get to take two celebrities. You have to, you have an hour uh, for, you know, 2024 uh, All Star game. You have an hour to prep these two celebrities to be able to be on your team for a three point contest. We'll, we'll, we'll stay away from dunks. You get to choose Kevin James or Adam Sandler. You got an hour to get them ready to do three points. What are you going with? I'm taking Sandler. I watched him play. I Let's watched him. Like, not- play. Yeah, I like his game. Yeah, well, remember in uh in, in so, Grown Ups One at the end of Grown Ups One that that, that home court? Yeah, let's go. He he got a little stroke with it. Let's go. I love it. So next question. We're doing a uh, a documentary. Uh, a lot of coaches get documentaries on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and all that. So you're getting a documentary and your opening song. There's two iconic bands that you get to choose from that basically you get to be your opening song. Are you going with Fly Like an Eagle, Fitting by Steve Miller, or are we going with Easy Like Sunday Morning? Which one? Commodores, Steve Miller. What's going to be your opening theme song for your documentary? Both Damn. iconic. Both good. I'm not going to lie to you. You'll be Steve play that song all the time. Let's go. Let's go. Did you have that one? Did you have that one, Kaylee? Yeah. Yeah, it's a banger. I got that one. Got you. Okay. <laughs> uh, the last one. So this, uh, the, here we go. This is what it comes down to. Last question. You get to, oh, this could be interesting. So one-on-one, you're, you're planted in a multi-universe. And you have to play a, a game of one-on-one pickup against one of these two figures. You have to play a game of one-on-one against A, Sasquatch. He's about 6'9", not too bad, right? At least allegedly. Sasquatch or Bebop from the Ninja Turtles. Sasquatch, Bebop, who you going against in a game of one-on-one? Is Rocksteady Rock there? Nope, just Bebop. <laughs> Bebop. <laughs> Let's go. You going Bebop? Nah, you know why I take Sasquatch? Because he can't move laterally. Let's go. <laughs> Be- Bebop, Bebop is pretty, pretty, I've seen him. He's flipping stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I take so, Sasquatch. 
How cool would that be if that was real and you're dunking on Sasquatch? What an epic shot to see you come up and just dunking on Sasquatch and he's got like his J's on and then right. nothing else. That'd be so right. cool, man. <laughs> so. And he falls too and I get a point at him. Let's go. <laughs> Kaylee, did you have that one? Yeah, I got that one. I was thinking more like a high so. I got you. I got you. Well, I think I beat you by one. So, Coach, thank you for that. That's just a little segment. Thanks for being a good sport. We do call uh, rapid fire, okay? <laughs> no problem. Like, what's next for you as a coach and for the program itself? Like, any big plans coming up, anything like that? Well, so I was actually supposed to um, <clears throat> coach women's um, Chinese national team this, this past summer. I wanted to do that really bad. That I get an opportunity to do it because I had so much on my plate. Um, so one of the things I want to do is be, get into a national team um, coaching thing where I'm, you know, helping helping another, you know, our head coach at some point at a national team for one of these one of these countries or whatever, you know. That's, that's cool. One of my, that is um, cool. Um, and that's one of the things I really want to do, but. For me, like I just want to continue to help these kids, you know, achieve what they what they set out for. Like as long as I'm doing that, I'm actually just I'm actually happy. So man, I, I, I've heard I've heard every coach say it from Coach Kaylee to our softballs of our tenue to basketball coach that I work with in Oklahoma State. Um, it's neat to see that no matter what level you guys are at, it's all about helping those kids, and I, I love that, and that's why you do it. You know what I mean? So. It makes me feel good to see it at every level that that's why you guys do this. And I appreciate that. My final question for you, coach, uh, before I kind of wrap up for you, uh, we do a little thing too, sometimes called open mic, where it's like a mantra, maybe you as a player, as a coach, as an athlete, as a mentor, if you could go back and give yourself a lesson, like you're doing to these kids now, a coaching moment, what's something you pass on to the next generation that maybe to help someone else along their way, you know? I think, I think one of the biggest things was, would be continue to build relationships. I mean, you have to and, and allow people to get to know you. And I think that's the that's the main thing when you're when you're when you're trying to um, trying to like succeed in life. And I think you just you always going to need people to vouch for you and vouch for the person you are. I mean, whether you're a woman or a man, like you have to be able to to resonate and and give that give that opportunity to other people because again, like. Like you never know what these people are gonna be or grow up to be. Like you, they may be a CEO of something, and they they may be talked. I mean, someone may talk to them and say, "Hey, who's the, you ever known Antoine Broxing?" Next thing you know, now they're talking either good or bad about you. Like, and I'm not saying like everybody's gonna like you, but at the same time, like they know the person you are, and being closed off and not being able to communicate, and it also to like it, it carries over when you when you're off the court because at some point this this the game is going to stop you know and you have to be able to 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 forge relationships with these people that that are outside mm -hmm. and i think that's the biggest thing and i and you know i did that but i would continue to tell people that all the time like you have to do that if you don't do it i mean it's going to be hard for you to succeed in life because life in life you're going to always need people you know, always going to need people to, to talk for you and talk about you. And because again, like you, you look at the newspaper or news, anything with news, you're talking about people. They're talking about people all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all about people. I mean, at the end of the day, like people are the currency uh, of, of today, of today. You know? That's fascinating, man. I, I, I think it's, it's, uh, It'd be sports would be a whole lot less interesting without people. <laughs> That's for sure. You know what I mean? So I got you. Uh, but you, you, again, you say it, coach Kaylee says it, our staff says it. It's interesting. Um, every, every coach highest level like yourself in basketball or highest level of coaches in softball or football I work with. I don't care what stage or program. It's fascinating to know that your philosophy resonates. Uh, it's almost like you guys you had to be born to do this. Cause it's something about coaches like yourself and Kaylee, you're just born with this ability to want to help others. And I could just see it all over you. When you talk, you want to help others. And then the game is almost second person. Then the game is how it feels, you know? So. Absolutely. After, yeah, absolutely. Man. Kaylee, do you have anything in closing to add to that? Cause I'm, I'm kind of, kind of speechless, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's really talking about all the things that I preach on, you know, my series. And even when I was on the show too, and it's just, 
the connections are always going to be there and you know it's always about what you do with those connections and if you foster them you know because like he said they are going to follow you and things like that but it's also I always say like it's about the person not the player like you could be the best player ever but if you have a terrible attitude and people don't want to be around you you're not going to get as far so I think Mm. that's awesome that you know we're still focusing on people and you know trying to build relationships because that's like he said the real world right you can't get far without people so I love that I love it. Thank you, Kaylee. Coach uh, Broxy, I, I can't say enough thank yous. Just, you know, I, I, it's always, we always feel like we're going to learn something new and we always do. And your take on the, the, the highest level in, you know, in, in, in your, in your, in your industry, it's, it's interesting to know that the most important thing to you is what happens off the, the court. So I can't say enough thank yous for that. Um, the world needs to hear that message. And that's what really does make the sport sports world go around is those relationships. So coach uh, open invitation, please know anytime you ever want to come back, uh, open door. We appreciate your, your mindset, your, your take on the game, not even getting into X's and O's, but you're a genius on that side. We wanted to showcase more of the, this, the, the human element, what makes people tick and just really that love you have for people so coach many many thank yous for doing this tonight okay so so you have a cleveland jersey on who is that who, who, uh, you know that this is my lebron i'm not gonna lie oh. I, I, I i will tell you lebron did and i, I don't like I, I i respect all thoughts and mindsets i grew up watching lebron i'm 37 lebron was you know he, oh. he, he was a so no disrespect to jordan all the different debates we could go there i, I get all that LeBron is what got me into watching basketball at, at its highest, right? Like I casually watched it before that, but LeBron got me into the sport. It really did. So, really you know, good. yeah. To, yeah. to that, I want to talk about like um, one thing here at Cleveland and Cleveland, that's one thing that, that Kobe and like the general man, I mean, general manager, they, they're big on hiring the right people all the time. And I, uh, I always give them credit on that. I wanted that you guys know that, like, they, they, like even the players that we bring in, are high class, high high character type people all the way from Donovan Mitchell all the way down the line. Like that's one thing they they very much pride us. We pride ourselves on in in Cleveland. I know a lot of people have this this thing about athletes making so much money and things like things of that mm-hmm. nature. But one of the things that they that they really really pride themselves on is always getting the right right players in terms of character wise and really give them that you know yeah. resonates throughout throughout the the whole office that's well, a I think- program too for sure because it's like you know some teams are just out there to pick the best player you know they don't take that time to know them as a person then they find out later and then it makes the program look bad so I think that's awesome that you guys are you know heavy hitters on focusing people first and because again if you can have good people around you you can do good things so I think that's awesome right I- I think coach about, and I say this with respect, uh, it's neat when you might have trades happen and have a couple of marquee names, but I think about programs like yourself and to some extent like Spurs, you're building quality athletes for the long haul, right? Long right. haul. I don't need a, a four month trade after the all-star game to help me maybe chase a ring when I can have a player there. That's a lifelong franchise player. That's going to help me be, I like that about what you guys do. It's amazing. You know? So uh, that, that's that's a philosophy we preach too, coach at all the time, even with our teams, even as young as what we do is, hey, right. stay with the same program. And it's, I understand if they don't, people move around, that's cool. But that chemistry, building a team, that's what you guys are all about, you know? Right. He's a, JB always preaches, it's not about being the best player, but it's about being the best team. And that's what, mm. that, and I think that resonates even on and off the court with basketball, even in the, um, in the, you know, workforce, you know, you have to, you have to have the best team and you have to be able to work together in every Man. to achieve one goal, you know? So. That's fascinating. I, 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 uh, I appreciate the mindset of that. And honestly, it, it helps in, in some ways um, it's refreshing to know that, like I said, whatever, what you do, you correlate in that to not everybody's going to be an athlete. I think Kaylee, we talked about this as the top, maybe 1% of athletes make it to the next level. And then even then like that is a, the career time frame of it. So knowing that whether it is an athlete, maybe it's a musician, a lawyer, doctor, taking what you're doing and just being the best at it and having people a support structure around you, what you're saying about sports, it correlates to every area, school, college, doctor maybe you want to be a dj maybe you want to do something that's totally what nobody else wants to do you right. got to have a support structure you know what i mean so right. exactly man so. 
Well, coach, I, uh, man, I, I am, I am thankful, man. What, what, the way you break things down, it's like, you'll say one word and I'll say five and your one word's more powerful. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's so much more eloquent, man. Uh, <laughs> yes. If you're playing 2k, which player would you pick and why? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I didn't hear you. Oh, which player in 2k would you pick and why? Um, you mean if I, when I'm playing 2k, cause I still play too. So. Yeah. If you're playing, like I need to know your top pick. Mm, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. It'll probably be that's D. Good. No, actually, it'll be either him or Darius Garland because they can do it. Okay. Fair, solid yeah. things. I love that. I always make myself. <laughs> I, it, oh. it'll, it'll be, it'll be player. It'll, I'm lying. I'm lying. It'll be Evan Mobley. It'll be Evan okay. Mobley. Okay. Yeah, right. I love. It. Yeah, it'll be Evan Mobley. Every basketball. Every Andy, time I. Every time I play it, Coach, what I do, I always go in there and make a character. I always make myself seven foot two, and my name is always Coast to Coast. <laughs> <laughs> so Coast to Coast with that. Uh-huh. They never yeah. get ripped. No one never, never. rips you. <laughs> no, sir. In NBA, they don't. But in real life, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? So, no. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That was a good question, Kaylee. So, Coach, um, you know, I, I say I say this with all, all my heart, man. I'm, I will be watching you. I watched – when you sent me the the – stuff of the day it was it was fun to watch man we're always watching games it's impressive man you you are good at what you do so i i guess maybe the the final final question if you're leading to it down the road if the opportunity presents itself you ever think about wanting to be a head coach down the road yeah. of course that's the, that's the ultimate goal i want my own team at some point but i mean have to go through have to go through the fire and get there you know you got to prove prove to these these people that you're the right man for the job because i love it these these programs and these um, these these teams, you know, they're they're meticulous about who they who they bring in, and they want to make sure that they're bringing the right guy. So, again, like yeah, that's what I'm I'm long term. You know, love it. Get that national team. That would right. step for sure. Right. Exactly. So I'm, love I'm getting, it. Got to get there. Well, they, well, they definitely made the, they made the right choice with you, Coach. I will say that, no question. I'm glad you're part of the franchise. I'm excited to watch even more. That's going to be a great season. Um, I have high high hopes and respectfully high expectations because you guys are good, man. So I can't wait to see uh, what you bring this fall. Um, let it be known, open invitation anytime. Please make it a point. If you're an alum to come back. Maybe we can debrief after the season when things get busy. So please make it a point to come back when you can, okay? Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. We'll be in touch, Coach. You take care. We'll get you back tonight, and we'll be in touch. And uh, much love and stay blessed. Okay. So you too. Guys, have a good night. You too. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. So, so Kaylee, I'm, I'm thinking about man. I, I I'm sitting there listening to him, and I'm just writing things down, just processing, break down. Help, help me out here. You know. That was great. I think he really touched on a lot that we already talk about on the show. And again, we can't say it more than enough. It's about the person behind the jersey, you know. And I think that's really awesome that he focuses on that and takes it, you know, on and off the court. And I think that's something that a lot of programs need to start focusing on, which I think they're getting there, but I think it was just great. And he's just really fun guy to talk to for sure. Wow. That was uh that was bucket list. Uh, I say um, I, I really have, I know you're not supposed to have more than one team that you follow in NBA, but I follow the Kings. Kings are my, are my, if you see, I've got my Kings hat on and then Cardinals, or excuse me, uh, uh, Cleveland. That, those are my teams I've watched. I really have. And what he's doing, it's it's beyond X's and O's. We go back to this all the time, Kaylee. It's beyond that. It's it's impressive what he does and what you do. Any coach, I feel, I mean, we talked about this once, whether I'm talking to a 10U team or, or an NFL women's national soccer, I don't care who it is or where they're coaching. If they're doing something to help someone, I love it. You know what I mean? So... Uh, man, I just speaking of changing lives, Kaylee, uh, you got fall tournaments coming up, you said right on the corner. Or? Yeah. Busy, busy, busy. I'm excited. I love fall ball. Best time. Well, um, Kaylee, uh, don't be a stranger. I know you're busy. We, we're glad that you're part of the staff. And this was a great night to catch up uh, old friends. Can't wait to see some more Kaylee's corner. We'll be cheering you on. We'll be obviously posting your, your, your fall tournaments and things like that. And so I know practice is about to be in full swing. So uh, give everyone at home base and uh, where you're at our love. Glad we can still you for the night. Let's catch up again soon and get some more content of you out there. Okay. So I'm good to meet. I love it. So on behalf of Kaylee and the Dane and Josh show and coach Caitlin as well, and coach Broxy and the Cleveland staff, thank you for this amazing night. Don't forget that we love you and thank you for listening.